Hey everyone, before the video starts, I just want to give a huge shout out to Rogue Energy for being a part of today's episode. Rogue has been very kind enough to be a part of my entire channel and also a part of every episode with their continued support and push, but also they are continuing to be a huge partner in my growth of YouTube. And if you don't know what Rogue Energy is, I'm going to show it to you right now. Rogue Energy is a healthy alternative energy drink that is delicious, low calories, high on the energy, and all natural and healthy for the body. If you drink that stuff like Monster and others, it's just carbonated sugar. Sugar. But this stuff is delicious. This is my personal recommendation for the month of April. I recommend blue raspberry and black cherry. So head on over to rogueenergy.com, use the promo code Technoid, save some money, find your next favorite flavor. And remember guys, not only are you helping yourselves by getting healthy alternative energy drink, but you're also helping me by using the code and supporting the channel. Anyway, once again, thank you to Rogue for being a part of today's episode. Alrighty, fair boys and fangirls, we're gonna take a trip to the other side of the world and talk to you today about the Vivo X Note. Apparently, that is a new premium flagship coming in April 11th alongside a couple of other devices by Vivo. We're gonna take a look at it in this episode and I'm gonna explain to you why, for the longest time, I think phones that come from China and other parts of Europe are just way cooler than the stuff we've got here in the United States. Also on today's episode, we have a reported first image of the Google Pixel 6a packaging. We'll talk about that in just one moment. And lastly, to round off the video, Apple is finally considering doing foldables for their foreseeable future in the iPad and MacBook department. All of that on today's episode, so don't touch anything, don't waste your time trying to skip through the video, enjoy the full thing in its finest, because Technoid starts right now. So first story, the main story, the Vivo X Note. Now, as you guys know, I don't normally talk a lot about Oppo, Vivo, and other OEMs that are over in the world of Asia and Europe and other areas of the world, mostly because I focus here what's at home in the United States. But after a long time of really talking about it, I felt that it was my obligation to keep you guys in the loop of what's going on out there. Because sometimes when you look around and you see things that are different, honestly, it makes you wish you had them. And that's exactly with this phone. Because the Vivo X Note is the newest premium flagship to be launched alongside of Vivo's upcoming lineup, which includes the Vivo X Fold and the Vivo X Pad on April 11th. Now, typically these devices are ultimately the same that we see in the United States, but there are some huge, huge differences in terms of performance, camera technology, charging technology, battery technology, software, everything. So I wanted to take this moment to talk about this phone and tell you why it's actually a really cool phone and it kind of makes you wish you had more Android options in the United States, but we'll talk about that in just a second. But anyway, taking a look at the Vivo X Note, this device is rumored to be featuring a brand new Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, which is the new flagship chip that every OEM is gonna go for on the Android side. But taking a look at the specifications, this is where this beast of a monster comes out. It is targeting a huge seven inch AMOLED display. Now we're on 6.9, 6.7, seven inches. That's what's up boys and girls. I like me a seven inch phone. I would love to have that. That's almost, almost the size of this. <laughs> but anyway, taking a look further, it will have of course a 120 Hertz refresh rate. For security, it will feature a in-display fingerprint scanner with also a curved edge display with a punch hole at the very center. Now, taking a look at the design of this phone, it actually looks very clean. I gotta say, it is a nice, sleek looking phone. And on the back of it, it has a nice array of camera technology. Taking a look at the camera technology, it comprises of a 50 megapixel Samsung primary camera, a 48 megapixel Sony lens, a 12 megapixel Sony lens, and an eight megapixel optical image stabilization camera with five times zoom. Also, other features for the device are still in the works because they're reportedly coming out on April 11th, but taking a look further, it will feature 12 gigabytes, eight gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes of storage, and up to 512 gigabytes of storage with an expansion SD card slot, one of the few phones that nowadays still has the SD card. Now, taking a look at the durability of this phone, in terms of charging technology, this phone will have a 5,000 milliamp hour battery and support an eye-whopping 80 watts of fast charging. Now, a lot of people have made a big buzz about that, and honestly, I could see why, because if I knew my phone was charging at 80 watts of fast charging, I would be looking at that thing 24-7. 
But taking a look further, it will also support 50 watts of wireless charging supported. There is no information on the selfie camera that's in the front of the punch hole. But other than that, there is more indication that this is going to be the next top tier premium phone for Vivo. And the price range, we don't actually have any price on that because then I have to convert in others and they didn't even put it on the website. But taking a look at this phone, you know, I gotta say, man, why is it that these other OEMs make such nice looking phones with some nice specs, but they're always limited to the Europe. Now I understand that's a bull statement because I do also know the politics and everything behind all these decisions with antitrust, carrier support, all that stuff goes into a factor. But if we just take our tech hats off for just a second and we actually look at this at face value, this is a pretty cool phone and it kind of makes you wish that we had more variety of choice. Sure, we do have OnePlus, but we've seen what they've done with their chances. Google is another good alternative. Obviously, we have Samsung. Motorola is around. LG's gone. So it would be nice to have a lot more variety of choice for Android users and also for people looking for great technology. And the Vivo X Note looks not only like such a superior phone in anything that I can think of, at least here in the United States, but it just makes me wish we had these options because I guarantee you, if you saw a phone that looked like this and could do almost half of everything that the competition could do, but probably better, I'm pretty sure you'd be willing to give it a shot. Now, of course, I know people are gonna disagree with that and people are gonna disagree with what I have to say anyway, but at this point, you gotta say what you gotta say, otherwise, nothing's gonna be this different. So let me hear your thoughts down below about the Vivo X Note. What do you think of this device? Do you think it's gonna be a big hit? And do you think we should have these devices here in the United States? Let me hear your thoughts down below. Alrighty, story number two, let's talk about the Google Pixel 6a. Now I did a short a few days ago talking about the Pixel 6a and I just wanted to expand on it on a full show. Basically we have a reported first image of the packaging showing the Pixel 6a with the similar Pixel 6 design, however with the dual camera setup with the nice Robocut like design. Now basically this is a rumored image so it could be real, it could be fake, we have no idea. So take this with a grain of salt, don't, I urge you guys please don't rush to any conclusions thinking this is real because it could be fake. But taking a look at it, it does reinforce all the rumors that we've heard about this phone which is basically going to be a slightly cheaper version of the Pixel 6, however they won't be cutting corners and will be giving it almost a flagship like experience which is something to take note of. Also looking further, we also see that the packaging shows that it's in line with the release of the new Pixel Watch. As we know, these two devices are rumored to be launched at Google I.O. this summer. So we're gonna have to keep our eye on Google I.O. because a lot of people are hyped more for the hardware than the software. So we'll have to wait and see on that one. And lastly, the final story, the Apple foldable experiment. Now, as you know, Apple has been dead set against making a foldable. They don't want to make it iPhone foldable, but they do want to make a foldable. So it seems that it's only natural that they start experimenting behind closed doors because according to several reports, they are evaluating LG for foldable iPad and MacBook glasses. According to Ming-Chi Kuo, he claims that Apple is reportedly working on a 20 inch MacBook foldable screen and that they will be sourcing LG for the material and they will also be experimenting with a physical product on making a foldable iPad and of course the MacBook. Now this is actually a very good experiment for Apple because not only does it give you a foldable, but it gives you the plateau to do the foldables right. Now I'm not saying that Samsung and other competitors aren't doing it right. They're doing exactly fine and they're gonna do a great job. But I think this is a smart approach for Apple because as we've seen in the beginning with foldables, the foldable had a rough start to say the least. And now they seem to have gotten their rhythm and Apple doesn't wanna go in that pattern. So the best thing to do is work with something that's big, huge, and honestly gives a lot of variety of choice. And having more screen to body gives you more flexibility. Ha, see what I did there? So making it a MacBook or an iPad makes total sense because if you try to make a foldable out of an iPhone, what are you gonna do, a clamshell? I'm sure people like the clamshell, but for me, I just never really liked it because when you open it, I wanna see something like this. If I close it, I would like to see something half of that. But regardless of that, it seems that Apple is going on board with this and we can expect them to start working on it for 2024, 2025. That is the rumored launch date for a foldable and uh, I'll keep you guys up to date on the loop on any Apple foldables coming in the future. And that's it for today's episode of Technoid. Now guys, I really hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, hit the like button. If you disliked the video, you can hit the dislike button. That helps with my videos as well. As always, everyone, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next episode. Have a great rest of your day, guys. Take care, stay safe, have a good day, and peace.